the church really has a knack for bringing up relevant topics and preparing students for a world that has disappeared. How's it going, everybody? I wanted to share with you something that I wrote early this morning. I was up late, kids are screaming, wife and I don't know what to do, and you know, I'm, I'm sleep deprived this morning, but I've just been thinking about uh, our role as youth leaders and our ability or maybe even our inability to prepare students for the world that is in front of them, the culture that is in front of them. And one thing that I've noticed, and maybe you have as well, is that the church seems to have a really knack for, a, re a really supernatural knack, that was the word that I was going to say, and then I decided not to say it for some reason, because supernatural knack sounds weird. But the church really has a knack for bringing up relevant topics and preparing students for a world that has disappeared. We're about 20 years too late maybe 10 if you're good, you know? And, and I think about the things that, that I was exposed to early on in youth group when I, when I was seeking and I was kind of, I gave my life to the Lord and I, but I still had a lot of questions. Um, church didn't seem to address those. And so what do we do about that? Well, this is, this is what I came up with this morning. So I hope that's not a lame way of kind of sharing this with you all. I'm just going to take you through what I wrote down. Uh, youth ministry struggles with the tendency to prepare students for a world that has disappeared. We we're preparing students right now for the for the late 90s, right? Uh, I don't know if you experienced that. Uh, but when we look at youth ministry, I've, I've always felt the church finally gets around to discussing those relevant topics 10 to 20 years too late. And so what do we do to address this? So this is where we are. We address this with a biblical worldview, which is aware of the current flow of ideas in culture. And I would go maybe even one step further. And I would say that not only do we need to be aware of the current ideas and the current culture going on, we need to be predicting what culture is going to be like in 10 and 20 years and preparing our students for eventually being adults in that world. So a, a biblical worldview is how we do that. A biblical worldview which is aware of the current flow of ideas in culture. I think that's very important. Francis Schaeffer, I mean, one of my heroes, if you haven't read Schaeffer, I mean, get on it. Uh, there's a flow to history and culture. I might be butchering this a little bit. I didn't actually look this up, but I just have it memorized. There's a flow to history and culture, and that flow is rooted in the way people think. So what do we need to do? How do we get to a place where we can anticipate culture? Well, Scripture addresses the ideas and challenges of our time, but we have to have a biblical amount imagination developed to make those connections. What do I mean by that? Uh, scripture is universal. It, it, it stretches beyond history and culture. It's, it, it touches every area of human existence, right? It has the ability to do that. Um, and so, so scripture is not locked in a particular time. It was written in a particular context, but it, ha but it seems to address uh, almost universally the struggles that humanity has throughout history. It's getting really philosophical, I apologize. But again, sleep deprived, okay. Um, so so an, a biblical imagination that is developed to make these connections between the truth that scripture gives us and the culture that we see in front of us. Scripture is not irrelevant to what's going on. And, and nothing is really new, right? Um, but we But we have to be able to make the connections between what the Bible is saying and how it addresses what we see in culture today. And so um, we need to be able to locate where we are today in the flow of ideas that has been going on from the beginning of time. We need to be able to locate where we are today. Um, and the way, the way that I've done this 
at least the way that I've attempted to do this, is to study the classics. Um, there is a conversation that has been going on between philosophy and poetry, theology and the arts uh, from the beginning. And we're aware of the fact that the human soul is ill, that there's a sickness that needs to be addressed. And we just need to find how we address that sickness. And, and a studying the classics is one of the ways that we become sensitive to that conversation. Studying the classics is a way of seeing the flow of ideas, locating where you are, and then... So, so classics gives you that, I, I think, you know. Uh, it, it allows you to see the flow of ideas and locate where you are. But then we need to go one step further. We need, we need to search scriptures. We need to search the scripture to find how the word of God has anticipated and addresses our current situation. Because I think it does. Again, it's, it's not irrelevant. It, it was written in a particular context, but scripture has a way of being universally applied regardless of what culture you're in, what language you speak, what gender you are, you know, how old you are. Um, it's, it's applicable to the needs that we have as human beings, to our culture. Um, it speaks powerfully and profoundly into this world. The only thing is that we tend to struggle to make those connections. And so, I don't exactly know <laughs> what that means for you, uh, other than, man, pick up, uh, pick up some books, pick up some books and start reading. Uh, read the classics, um, understand the flow of ideas that has been going on, because the work that is in front of us as, as youth pastors, as youth leaders, as parents, as students that are involved in youth ministry, but just still hungry to know how Jesus speaks into my culture. We need to um, be aware of those conversations and be aware of how scripture addresses what's going on. Um, we need to anticipate where culture is going as much as we need to be aware of where culture is today what we need to stop doing is training and equipping our young people for a culture that is disappearing for a culture that is 10 to 20 years in the past it's not to say that those that's bad we need to understand where we've been to understand where we're going but my encouragement to you would be to, if you wanted to start, I'll leave a bunch of links and stuff like that. I'll, I'll do my homework and, and share the links. But if I was to recommend one place, obviously, you know, reading scripture, you got to be doing that. Read Francis Schaeffer. Uh, read How Should We Then Live, Christian Manifesto. Read, uh, read all that. Read everything Schaeffer published. Um, and, and then allow that to spur you on to some of the other things. I mean, I'm a big Schaeffer guy, so forgive me for that if, if, if you're not quite there. But um, I'll leave some, some links and stuff like that. Um, we need to read. We need to read a lot. And um, we need to work together. So good luck. Hope that's helpful. See ya.